Get in on the action and make your bet with Sports Interaction. Summer is heating up with baseball. Can the Jays make a run at the division? Oh, <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> uh, hey, but you can bet before the game, whichever way you think, live and in play uh, at all your favorite teams and hot dog contests. Woo! Woo! Sportsinteraction.com slash STPN or download the app to get started. It's 19 plus. And what do you have to do, Steve? Please play responsibly. Welcome to Nailing the Apex, everyone. I'm your host, Tim Haraney. If you want more Nailing the Apex, you can get it wherever you get your podcast. Please head over to Spotify, give us a five-star rating and a follow. Same goes with Apple Podcasts as well. Write reviews. It helps us grow the pod. You can also watch us on YouTube as well. And you can follow me on social media at Tim Haraney. On today's show, we've got uh, Simon Paginod, uh, IndyCar driver. Now, we taped this with Simon before the Mid Ohio race, and unfortunately, during the Mid Ohio race, Simon was Simon was involved in a, a pretty horrible accident, uh, barrel rolling a couple times, and since then, um, IndyCar hasn't the medical staff at IndyCar hasn't qualified him to go in, in race yet, so Simon won't be participating in. This weekend's Honda Indy Toronto, sadly, um, Tom Bloomquist is set to sub uh, for Simon in the Meyer Shank Racing uh, car for this weekend. Uh, Simon posted on his social media uh, after undergoing further medical evaluation this week under the care of the IndyCar medical team. I have not been cleared to race. While I feel good, I am still recovering with back-to-back races. There just wasn't enough time to allow my body to fully recover in time to compete this weekend. I will continue to follow the medical team's recommendations so I can be back racing soon. Thank you, everyone, for your support. So Simon won't be racing for Meyer Shank Racing this weekend. Won't be racing at all. Um... So that sucks. Feel really bad for Simon. Uh, great racing driver, great guy. Um, but yes, he was nice enough to give us 15 minutes of his time a few weeks ago, and we recorded a little preview of the Toronto Indy. So here it is, and I hope you enjoy it. Simon, thanks very much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. How are you? Hi, Tim. I'm good. Thank you. Um, so we're taping this in lead up to the uh, Toronto Indy, so the Honda Indy of Toronto. Uh, you've won here before in uh, in the past. Um, it's a difficult track, and it's pretty bumpy, isn't it? <laughs> I love the place. I do. Uh, it, it's fun. It's bumpy. It's it's full of um, character. Um, obviously, there's a rough winter there. No, no, no. Yeah. You can't hide that, you know. So <laughs> it creates new bumps every day, every year because of the weather change. Um, but it makes it interesting for us. You know, it's, um, it's a track that I really enjoy. It's very technical and you have to nail, nail everything, um, you know, and be as close as you can to the wall, apex wall. Um, and it makes it very exciting. I personally love it. The, um, the last corner there before the uh, start finish straight away, that used to be a little bit different and pit lane obviously used to be on the other side of the track. Do you, which part of the configuration do you prefer the most? Because I, I believe you raced there when, when they had the, uh, the old configuration, right? Yeah, yeah, I raced there when we had the 910 was, was actually a pretty right. fast corner, fifth gear, I think. Um, I actually enjoy this layout, the new layout, much better because um, it's very technical, it's quite bumpy. And again, um, I love the, the dancing with the car in second, third gear. It's super technical. Um, uh, personally, I love it better now. When you uh, when you drive here, I mean, obviously there's the uh, there's the concrete patches, and you know we hear drivers talk about the challenges of navigating that. I mean, for uh, yourself, can you just walk like the listeners and viewers through? I mean, how you kind of tackle that because you have that grip change as well, right? When you're going from like that concrete to the asphalt uh, to the cement. Yeah, for example, uh, if you break for turn one, um, you know the Prince's Gate there. You're braking, it's bumpy, um, and you have to pick exactly where you want to position the car to avoid that bump. Um, where do you want to have the bump? Do you want the bump in the middle of the car, on the right front or the left front tire? Uh, and depending where you are, it, it changes the, the way that the car is going to handle in the corner. Then you land in the middle onto the uh, concrete patch right on the curb, and you kind of throw yourself early to it to slide, to slide mm-hmm. the car on top of the concrete patch and accelerate on the exit on the asphalt, uh, which is grippier. 
so it's um, you know you always have to do everything by anticipation, and as it happens, you has you have to react really quick to anything uh, unexpected. Coming up to uh, to Canada, I mean, you know, IndyCar mainly races in North America, and then you've got the stop here in Toronto. Would you like to see any other uh, 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 races on the calendar outside of North America? Yeah, I would. You know, obviously, as a Frenchman, um, anywhere we can go is good for my international fan base. Um, mm. And, um, you know, I understand, obviously, we're trying to grow as much as we can in, in, North, in, in the U.S., but... Uh, yeah, I miss going to Canada. I miss going to Edmonton. I miss going to Mont Tremblant. Mm-hmm. Uh, those were great tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I miss going to Montreal. You know, it was awesome. Great city. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm already getting ready for dinners in Toronto because it's one of my favorite <laughs> things of the year. <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, the race in Edmonton, you, you mentioned that. That uh, Yeah, I, I I remember that race uh, Yeah, quite quite fondly that was on the airport strip wasn't it if i remember yes. correctly yes it was yeah it was uh it was very fast yeah. and very physical as well yeah and then did you ever do the um did you ever do the vancouver the vancouver no. race I, I raced in the Vanco- yeah, no. the, the vancouver event that was a you did? yeah that was a great track man it was it was fast it was technical but just the downtown the atmosphere and everything like it was it was a great track. I wish like IndyCar would go back there. Um, yeah. But uh, talking about this season, um, you know, how do you feel your season has gone so far um, with the team? Well, it's tough. I mean, it's been tough. You know, I'm not super excited about our results. Um, we've had a few DNF too many. Uh, it's costing us a lot of points. Uh, so we're definitely not where we should be in the standing. And uh, in terms of performance, quite frankly, um, the last two races finally showed a lot of positive. Uh, it, but it was tough until now. Um, now, the last two, I'm feeling, okay, now we can see the glimpse uh, at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and I'm happy about that. And I'm kind of trying to grasp onto that because um, I want everybody on the team to be motivated. And obviously, when you don't have the results, that's actually the hardest thing to do is mm-hmm. keeping everybody 100% keeping them motivated and wanting to do more um, and go, you know, search for little things here and there on the car to make it quicker. So um, I'm trying, I'm trying to push as hard as I can and, and trying to show interest in everything. Uh, but yeah, I would like to, I would like to see some, uh, uh, some results come to help and, and make sure that everybody's on board with me. It's such a, it's such a long season. It's a challenging season. There's a ton of travel involved. The teams, they work, you know, day and night on these cars, trying to get everything ready. I mean, how is the driver, like, do, like how do you get everybody like motivated? Like what's your strategy for that? Well, the best thing is results. <laughs> Number one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> so we don't have that right now. So how do you do it? Well, you know, it's about, to me, it's about being a leader and, and trying to show a direction. Uh, a direction in which you can be successful. Um, and, you know, lately I've been trying to explain to the team what we needed to be uh, stronger. Um, and I go by five points, you know, it's what is our five, uh, five points of priorities uh, mm. in order and, and how do we improve each points? And then I have to deliver next to, to mm. give them the results that we deserve. So uh, we're in that stage right now trying to work on those five points and hopefully we can get that done quickly so I can show that it was the right direction. For uh, for a driver like, you know, yourself, you've been in IndyCar for, you know, for quite a while. You've had a lot of success. Um, I guess, like, when do you start looking at, uh, not retiring, but moving, like, moving on, like, from IndyCar to something else? Like, is that something you ever would look at in the near future? Or is it, are you always focused on IndyCar? Well, I tell you, the only reason I would look somewhere else is uh, for a better opp- opportunity at winning. Mm. Um, you know, I'm someone that's driven by by, by winning, by competition. Um, and yeah, it's tough when you're not doing well, for sure. But that's not a reason to give up. Now, if there is, um, you know, if there is, I would say, a hope in the horizon, then that gets me going. Um, but uh, if there isn't any hope, then yes, you start looking somewhere else and you try to understand how you can uh, make your career the best you can. To me, it's, it's, about, it's about results. It's about you know, being successful in what we do. Uh, the, uh, the training aspect of, of what you have to do, Simon, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, for, for every athlete, right? It's, 
you, your, your recovery time changes as you get older, you know, what you could do, you know, is different from what you could do from when you were 20, that type of stuff for yourself. Like, um, have you had to like change the way you train and recover so you can deal with the season itself because you have so much travel involved too at the same time? Team, do you have a midlife crisis? Well, let me tell you, I turned 40. <laughs> let me you tell go. you something. Let me tell you something. When I turned 40, dude, I have been like, so I train for triathlon, right? Mm -hmm. And I used triathlon training for my racing career back in the day when I raced in Atlantics and did some stuff yeah. in Champ Car. And now when I get into my 40s, when I train now, like I need like at least another day off so I can recover, so I can get a better training uh, training regime put in for the following days. And so I have to prioritize sleep, eating, when am I training, how hard am I going, prioritizing all of that. So for yourself, like, how, do you have to do that as well? Like how, how do you have to structure, I guess, your training so you can handle the load of a full IndyCar season? Yeah, I, it's, actually, it's actually interesting. I've improved through the years with that process. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention when I was a kid, you know, kid being 20, 25 years old, mm. to, um, to rest and stretching and, and all that kind of stuff. But I used to get injured a lot, especially when I came around 32 years old. I started injuring myself a lot um, muscle-wise. Um, and I've improved a lot since then with my nutrition, hydration. Indeed, I, I started paying a lot of attention to that. So I, I don't know if it's part of getting old or getting smarter, mm. but, uh, with your own body, but it's understanding better what you need to do for, for me, it's been, you know, doing blood work, understanding how my mm -hmm. body functions at best and making sure that, you know, I've got all my hormones at the right level. Uh, so I've been doing that and it's definitely changed my life. Meditation has been great for me as well, for my brain, uh, and also the breathing exercise, just getting me relaxed when I need to be. Um, but yeah, the sleep, and it's been a, a problem of mine because it's kind yeah. of a handicap. You know, I need, I was telling my wife two days ago, she's like, how come you're so tired? I'm like, well, I need one night of 12 hours of sleep. Yeah. She said, 12 hours? I said, yeah, well, that's how I am. That's what I need. Uh, it makes a big difference for me. <laughs> Well, you have a young one at home too, don't you, Simon? Like you're I have busy. Two. I have two. So yeah, you're busy dad. Hours, it's like uh, <laughs> 12 hours is like a paradise island that doesn't exist, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, looking at uh, IndyCar as a whole, I mean, obviously, you know, you've been racing in the series for so long, but you've seen it grow, right? Like yeah. you've seen, you know, you've seen where it was and like where it is now. Um, can you just describe, I guess, to the listeners, the trajectory that, that IndyCar is, is now on? I, you know, I kind of feel, uh, I'll be super honest with you, but I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. it kind of sucks. It kind of sucks to be where I'm at right now because I wish I was coming in right now, uh, seeing how the salaries are going up and yeah. how the teams are getting stronger. Um, and, and the viewership is just incredible. I mean, it used to be that I could go on a flight, never get bothered by anyone. Now I go to the airport anywhere and it's like, oh, it's Simon, Simon here, Simon there. And people turning around and you're like, why are they looking at me that way? Um, and it's not just me. I mean, every driver in the series is that way right now. It's growing. Uh, you could see the interest from people. You can't walk to your car on the grid without bumping into people anymore. That's it's awesome. nuts. Um, it wasn't like that. And it certainly mm -hmm. changed a lot since, uh, I would say, since 2000. I, I saw a shift in 2017, 16, mm. 17. Uh, but yeah, 2011, 2012. It's a whole different story. Yeah, for sure. Um, the uh, the uh, the Indy 500, uh, 100 Days to Indy docu series that uh, has wrapped up. Did, what did you, what did you think? Like, did you did you like what they did? Do you? I so my 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 personal thing was it. I, I liked it. I just wish they would have uh, not censored so much. Do you think they did? I felt like I, they censored the drivers a bit. Actually, you know, I I think it's I think it's a. I don't know what's going on with the uh, IndyCar drivers, but they're all buddy buddies. Yeah. <laughs> all of them. For sure. Um, For sure. I don't consider myself in that group because I don't hang out with them. Uh, I've got kids at home and, you know, I have my own friends that I need to dedicate time to them. <laughs> I don't know how they have time to be buddy buddies. And, <laughs> you know, they go golfing and then next weekend they just start banging wheels and they're best friends after that. You know, I don't quite understand that process, but um, I don't think it's being censored. I actually think the drivers 
show that they have, you know, they get upset when the bank wins. They get out of the race car, they're like, oh, that's my buddy. Um, well, it's fine. Next weekend we'll be better. And unfortunately, it doesn't create that drama that we're all looking for. Yeah. Uh, nobody's punching each other. Nobody's uh, kidding each other on social media. And it's a bit of a shame for the show. Yeah, I kind of, like like I said, like I, I liked it. I just wish they wouldn't like bleep out the swearing because sometimes it's like you know that's when it like you know the drivers like really elevated when they start swearing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of that though. I don't understand. It must have been censored. You're right. There's a lot of that in my head, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Simon, uh, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. Uh, we look no forward problem. to seeing you up here in uh, in Toronto. And uh, yeah, good luck this weekend in Mid Ohio. Yeah, Have fun. I look forward to seeing you in, in Toronto. Thank I'll be you. there. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Awesome. See you soon.